Let's bring in Mark Douglas, CEO of Mountain, and Needham Senior Analyst Laura Martin returning with us once again. It's great to see you. Laura, let me begin with you. Uh, because they gave this uh, incredibly optimistic view on what they were able to do signing up new subscribers, did it persuade you that now might be a good time to get into Netflix? It didn't. We think it's too early. Um, they said their ad revenue will not be meaningful in 2023. And more importantly, they took a price increase last year, first quarter. And this year, the form of the price increase they're taking is they're going to basically disconnect any um, of your subscribers that are out of your home. So they're called those borrowers. And they're going to try to get rid of password sharing, which is a form of price increase. But unfortunately, that, what that forces consumers to do, like me, who pays $20, because I have kids all over the college you know, using it, is it forces us to re, like, reevaluate and downgrade to the $9 service, right? And then my kids have to subscribe separately. And I think that's really bad for inertia. I think inertia is the reason we have so many linear TV ecosystem subscribers. That, that's a really powerful motivator. So they shouldn't be asking me to reevaluate downgrading my tier because I might just turn it off completely. It might be inertia and it also might just be that once a year there's a there's a program on traditional television that the family wants to watch. And then what are you supposed to do? But I digress. Mark, you and Ryan Reynolds picked Netflix for your CNBC stock draft. You're yeah. winning because of it. Congratulations. If the draft Thank were you. held today, would you still pick Netflix? Um, well, certainly the stock price a year ago it was a lot more attractive than it is now. But I think what you're saying is Netflix traditionally has led in the media business. Like a lot of the innovations you've seen in streaming have come from Netflix. And I think now you're seeing with the management change they're making, they're gearing up to lead some more. And so, yeah, I would I would invest in the manage, management team at Netflix for them to navigate the ad business, for them to navigate the password sharing. And there's essentially generate more growth. And so I think that the, any investor looking at Netflix now, um, the, it's a good time. Given the ad landscape right now, where we're seeing so many companies worried about what's coming down the pike. And in fact, Laura and I were talking earlier about that happening with Google and what's happening with YouTube and the search ads and all of that. Uh, is, is now a good time for Netflix to be launching the ad part of this business? Well, I think they have. Is that for me? Is that yeah, for, yeah, yeah, Mark? I want you yeah, to answer that. Yeah, I think I think they have no choice. I mean, in terms of is is it the best time? In some ways, it's not. And the reason for that is you have a lot of supply coming into the market from Netflix, from Disney Plus, but you're seeing demand pulled back on the behalf of especially large brand advertisers. So those big brand advertisers responding to macroeconomic conditions are just generally definitely not increasing their spend, and they, in a lot of cases, are decreasing it. So that classically sets up for a price war, a decrease in prices. So it's not an ideal time, but I think I think people, these advertisers are really excited about Netflix at the right price. And so Netflix will still navigate that. Laura, I take your point that Netflix has a lot of moving parts to deal with, ads, uh, password sharing, pricing and the like, um, which all lead you to say this is not the time to get into Netflix. What would change your opinion? What would you like to see that would make you go, this stock, even after its run up, is investable to me? So it's trading at 33 times net a PE on this year, and it's going to—it's had sub growth deceleration. It was four percent in the most recent, which means to get to double-digit growth, you must have price increases of eight percent every single year. I don't think that can happen. So what I would want to see is not only the ability to raise price, which apparently they can. I would want to see user or sub growth. Users would be fine if they're ad-driven, no problem, but. Since they say advertising is not going to be meaningful, I don't know how many users are getting of their ad driven tier. Just not sure. I would like to see both user growth and pricing growth. Do they so have to get... have big mega hits to drive subscriber growth, Laura, like uh, yes. Harry and Meghan, Glass Onion, whatever? Yep. It's a hit driven business, and Wall Street hates with hit driven businesses because they're not annuity streams. Right. And, and the fact is, Mark, we've seen other streamers decide that they're going to dole out big hits episode by episode and make you wait for a week. I guess 
I'm assuming it's because they don't want everybody going in, binge watching it, and then canceling the service after one month. Is Netflix going to be able to continue to allow people to binge watch these big hits that are may drive new subscriber growth? Yeah, I mean, so I always think of Netflix as they're the service you watch when there are no big hits on any place else. So they have their own hits, but they have so much content that when you just turn on the TV and you're just looking for something to watch, you generally, from my perspective, you go to Netflix. And that's why there have been every you know household kind of number one choice for streaming. So I think hits are important. They've driven the business, but I don't think that they are really the core reason you get Netflix. And so for that reason, they can continue to release all the shows at one time. And also, I just wanted to add on Laura's comment on the previous question. I agree with Laura that driving subscriber growth to get to those numbers is going to be difficult. But I also think Netflix is sandbagging expectations in terms of their ad business. Um, Jeremy Gorman and the team there were at Snap. They were at Disney, Hulu. They know how to build multi-billion dollar ad businesses. And I think you'll see that develop faster than Netflix is, is setting expectations for it. Mark Douglas, Laura Martin, it's great to talk to both of you. Thank you very much. You know what I'm noticing, Tyler? We've mm. got these we've got these setups here. Yeah. I look like I'm looking at Mark. I look like I'm look, looking at Laura, but they can't see that. So I, you have to say somebody's name. Mark's yeah. like, are you, is that for me? They can't for, see yeah, you. Yeah, no, right. no, no. Like, and, now, and now everyone who's listening on Sirius is saying, Contessa, what are you talking yeah. about? But this is the way it works. No, I love our new it. reality. 